This is exercise 27 in the Paint with Lens series of short lessons. Today let's paint this rather tall painting of an eagle's view and we'll put the eagle in. I have here my canvas which is about 2 foot by I'd say 14 inches which is 600 millimeter by 350 millimeter. And over here on my palette I have two colors, ultramarine blue and white. I'm working in acrylics. You see how runny my paint is? It came straight out of the tube like that. Now we don't want any brilliant white. So let's tone all our white down a little bit. Just a little. So we pick up a very little bit of the blue and mix it with our white because we don't want any brilliant white. Add it slowly. And that's as bright as we get. We don't want it any brighter than that. You can mix it completely if you wish, but I'll mix it just to that extent. And then I'll take a good bit of that and I'll make it darker. That's for our next tone. And we don't need to go much darker than that. That is plenty dark enough. No darker than that. Actually, that's a little bit too dark. I might have to put a bit of white with that later. So there's our colours. Dark blue, medium blue, light blue. And I'll keep that white up there for later. We'll start painting from the top of the board. I'll take the lighter, paler colour. And that is the horizon out there somewhere. I'm working with acrylics. Acrylics are inclined to dry out. And so I give it a little spray with water now and then. And that lets me spread my paint very quickly. Don't put water on your painting after you have everything finished. Be very careful not to spray water on top of any detail that you have finished because it will destroy the detail. We don't know what that is out there. It's too far away to see. So we make it look like it's the sky and the horizon merging together. But it must be pale. So we use our whiter colours and our pure white to blend it in. Let's have the horizon slightly curved so we go a little bit darker and lay in a slight curve. It is better to be standing up while you're doing this because you can move your whole body and get an even curve. That'll do. Be careful not to dip down at the edge. Don't go off like that. Think of the rising coming across from way over there and going way over there. Well, I need to get this colour off my brush, so we'll unload it like that. And here we can block in the landscape with bold brush strokes and pick up a slightly different tone each time. Here we don't have any steep slopes, just gentle sloping area and block them in. Leave your brush strokes. We do want to see those brush strokes. Now for some detail. Let's have something there. I don't know what it is. It looks like a big paddock. And something like that and like that. We don't know what it is because it's too far away. Here our tones are very light. And use the same tones for each brush stroke. Make your strokes rather short and deliberate. Each one will be a complete side of a hill or a large paddock. Which look okay if they get square edges. Some paddocks have square edges. So what you're really painting is a patchwork area with ever so slightly different tones of blue. And each brush stroke is at a different angle but almost horizontal. Now as we come forward towards us we use the same pattern but bigger and darker brush strokes. And the paler we make it the further away it will look. Here's a bit of pale detail We'll put in the middle of the painting. That's too light. Tone it down by blending it. I'll give these slopes a slight curve, but very slight. We're looking down on them. And I'll clean my brush down here. I don't like that bit. It's darker and sloping out. It attracts the eye, and we don't want to be attracted to over there. Let's have a bit of detail. This can be a town, so we can make this area different with what looks like a flat area of trees but keep it horizontal. Here we use our imagination and if we see anything that looks a bit like something then leave it there. There's a gentle slope there. 
and were weaving the hills and gullies in, tone it down and clean the brush, and then let's have trees in the valley following the gully and running up the ridge. Have a close look. You see it is a matter of dabbing a texture into the wet paint. The texture runs up and down the ridges. And while we're working, we're looking at spots that are too dark and too light, like that bit. Dab, dab, tone it down without going back over the brush strokes. And make a texture that looks like different trees. Clean the brush and start again. Be careful not to spray your finished work. If you're working in oils, you won't have this problem with your paint drying so fast. I'll give this an undercoat here. Don't brush brush too much. Oh, that's a bit different there. It can become a paddy of some sort, like that. Keep your brush strokes in this direction, in this direction. Nothing like that. We must work like this. The land flows like that. I'm still using my flat brush to paint trees. And being closer, they are slightly bigger. They're not much bigger. As they do get closer to us, we can add more detail. So I'll dab dab harder and make bigger trees. Keep dab dabbing, cleaning the brush in front of the trees and not going back over your finished work. Now a little bit darker and keep the shape of the valley. It's a valley going away from us. Slightly darker here. Now I'll fill in this area with undercoat. Hmm, got a bit dark. We do need to go a bit dark here. That's given us a shape of a valley. Back to the palette and we're going to have brighter tones and darker tones now. Pick up different tones on different sides of the brush and dab trees on with a dark tone underneath. That is your dark bit of your brush touching the canvas first. Here we follow the ridge line. That's too bright. The bright disappears. Let's have another paddock. Don't let your hills drop off at the side of the painting. Dip them coming straight in or in and down. Clean my brush down here. See that bit there? It's a bit dark. So add slightly darker tone here and there and it will look okay. At this stage we can't quite see what's down there forest of hills or paddocks underneath us. A bit more water spray and get the undercoat on quickly. Then put some bigger dark areas in. The shape of rolling hills below us. I'd add a bit of crimson to the bottom here. Just a little bit. Very subtle. And to that add a bit of blue. Brush it in well. Now I must clean my brush again. It's got crimson on it. Back to the blue colours again, and these are darker tones. Load light and dark on either side of the brush, and the darker tone face down to the canvas again. Dab, 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 gives us a row of trees. Clean the brush by blending the paint in front of the trees. That's a good habit. Sometimes it becomes the best bit of the painting. Dab, dab, keep watching for good bits, and work forward from them. Clean the brush with bold crisscross brush strokes and clean it each time before you reload it. Deliberately load it with dark and light tones and have a good look at your brush to see if it's loaded properly. Well they're really both light tones but one is just a little bit darker than the other. This gives you what looks like the sunny side and the shady side of the little trees. Add paddocks here with big brush strokes sloping down the hill and flattening out at the bottom of the hill. Now it's time to change to a round brush, I think. It's an old brush, so I'll load it with plenty of paint and then clean it a bit. And that'll make it like putty. And I can shape it to a chisel point and then pick up the light and dark on each side of the brush, ready for more trees. Dab it on perpendicular to the board and dab on closer trees. A bit harder brush strokes. 
but they are still very pale and that's what we want. Load it again. That looks like a valley. Good. I'm dabbing the brush on quite hard. It's nearly dry, but has just enough paint on it to give me these misty trees and clean the brush up and down the ridges. I'll put some bright bits down here and that'll attract your eye into the valley. And another bit there, there, there. Now, at last we can use those darker tones and give us a closer ground. Add a little bit of crimson. The brush is loaded with dark and light. Bigger trees down here. Leave space between them. Don't go back over them unless you need to adjust the tone. Load the brush. Then with a painting knife, load the very edge with a few different tones. Have a practice and place in some roads. You will need to look very hard to see them, but they are there. Put your roads in broken lines, zigzag up the valley towards you. This one's closer, it's a bit more prominent. And along the road, there might be farm sheds. So if something looks like it could be a shed, then touch it in. It might stand out a bit. If it doesn't work, go on to the next one. I'll put some in as dots, a little bit of paint on the tip of my knife. Now with dark paint on the knife, we'll have the road coming up here. Cover it here so you can't see it for the trees. It's too prominent there, I'll knock it back a bit. And add a few farms, just one or two farms in this area. Here we have a new palette. I have cadmium red, burnt sienna and Prussian blue. The only thing I saved from that old palette was the white. The Prussian blue and burnt sienna mixed together will make a colour almost black. We will use a lot of red in there. The reason I'm using cadmium red because we'll get a terrific contrast between the blue and the grey red. So the eagle will really stand out. Let's pick up a lot of dark. Then we need to decide where to put the eagle. We're looking straight down on it. I think I'll put it oh, like that. That's the wings. And the body is there, like that. The body is less than half the wingspan. I'll try to get this straight and perfectly balanced. OK, that's the general shape of the Wedgetail Eagle. Make his head round. Tail a bit bigger. The wings come out like fingers. We have to make this one bigger. That one's too big. We'll have to go bigger here. Bigger, bigger, bigger. Paint your eagle small, and as you correct it, it will become bigger. That's wrong. This wing is not as big as the other wing. It's getting bigger and bigger. You 
You might see my colours not mixed. And here we have fingers and feathers. Do it again on the other wing. It's not easy to get it perfect. The head is very round. The tail is a definite pointed shape with feathers showing. I do think this needs a bit of work here. I'm steadying my hand, see? With my fine brush, I'll put in these things that look like fingers, wing tips. like that. And the tail has feathers, round, round, round feathers. It needs a little more shoulder. On my brush is red, just a few lines, not too much. On the other side of the brush is white. We can see highlights on the side of the head, not much. Take the red and run some detail along the wing. I'm letting the brush run out of paint so the red will blend into the dark underneath. Those white bits are too bright. Don't try to be perfect with your eagle unless you're an advanced bird painter. You need to find a mean level of detail to give your work an arty look. So step back about 10 feet and see how it looks at a glance. And if the first impression it's okay, then that'll do.